let's say you're a brash young scoundrel. You mosey into your local scum hive and head for the villainous back room. The door whooshes open, and through the dim light you can make out a seated, hooded figure, his face shrouded. On the table in front of him is a stack of credits and a worn-looking Savak deck. He waves his hand in a smooth arc and says, You want to sit down and play. Hours later, you're alone in the room. The hooded stranger is gone. All of your credits are gone. Only you don't remember what happened. And you have this odd, growing urge to go home and rethink your life. Solo, A Star Wars Story comes out in less than three months, and with its promise of high-stake, bird-named ship-related wagers between Londo and Han, the topic of gambling in Star Wars is as hot now as it was with that casino fiasco in The Last Jedi. And while for the most part Star Wars can copy and paste almost anything from the real world into its universe without too much trouble, some things, like gambling, don't translate quite as smoothly, despite all those little slug people in their cute little vests. For example, how the hell does gambling work if there's no such thing as luck? And without luck, why would anyone want to gamble? And what about force-sensitive people? There has to be laws against them gambling, right? Well, let's start simple. Obi-Wan is right. Luck probably doesn't exist. At least, not in the real world. If one were to flip a coin, it'll land on heads or tails 50-50 on average. That's just physics. That's just how the universe works. Sometimes it may seem like the odds are against you, but they're not. The odds never change. The universe is a boring place that never changes, and that's just the way it is. However, if one were to flip a coin in the Star Wars universe... What are the odds it'll land on heads? And what are the odds it'll land on tails? Well, the funny thing is, it really depends on who's doing the flipping and how the Star Wars universe feels about that person at that time. There are figures throughout the films, comics, and novels that defy odds and triumph over obstacles that should have been insurmountable. And it's not merely narrative bias or heroic plot armor. There's actually a very real in-universe explanation. Star Wars' beloved deus ex machina, the Force. Now, I'm not talking about the moving rocks Force. I'm talking about that one that has a will. The one that everyone is saying, it was the will of the Force. But it doesn't look at each coin toss individually. If it sees the scales tipping too much in favor of someone or something, it's going to start stacking weight on the opposite side. It's why you get a little boy winning first place in the Boon to Eve without ever having won a pod race in his life. It's why you have a ragtag group of rebels win a guerrilla war against a massive galactic war machine. In fact, this trend of the Force playing favorites lends itself well to our own real-life concept of luck. As the Merriam-Webster Dictionary says, luck is a force that brings good fortune or adversity. When the Force sees fit, it will ensure you have good fortune, and when it sees fit, it will ensure you face adversity. Jar Jar serves as a great example of this concept. Jar Jar is like an empty vessel. He appears to have repeated inexplicable instances of good luck, but in reality, it isn't luck. His weak-mindedness simply allows him to work as a near-perfect conduit for the will of the Force. But that same weak-mindedness of his, just one film later, also allows Chancellor Palpatine to easily manipulate the Gungan to his own designs. So when luck has a will of its own, what do you do when you want to be a gambler? Well, it would seem the only sane thing to do is cheat. And the more people that figure that out, the more people cheat, until pretty soon almost everyone is cheating. In almost every instance of gambling presented to us in Star Wars, someone, if not everyone, is cheating. And that's why Watto couldn't go to the huts for justice for his bet against Qui-Gon. What was he going to say, that Qui-Gon cheated? They would have laughed him out of town. The long and short of it is, if you want to gamble in Star Wars, just like in real life, you'd better hope that Lady Luck has your back. Because like Watto found out, and Sebulba, and the crew of the Death Star, 
and even Qui-Gon, the Force finds a way to balance the scales. Oh, and what about Force-sensitive people and gambling? Well, there isn't a whole lot I could find regarding this save for one short story from Star Wars Adventure Journal. Though it isn't clearly stated in the story, it's implied that one of the main characters, a legendary and unbeatable gambler, is Force-sensitive. He is so unbeatable, in fact, he quickly runs out of people who will gamble with him. He ends up trapped for decades in some sort of space anomaly while searching for opponents, and on at least one occasion he's hunted by heavily armed thugs hired by a former and spurned opponent. So, there you have it. If you never lose a bet, it'll probably raise some eyebrows, and you'll probably have to deal with some bounty hunters now and then. So that's my take on Star Wars and gambling and luck in the Star Wars universe. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. If you'd like to stay up to date with other videos I'm coming out with, don't hesitate to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you guys again. May the Force be with you.